Hey everybody, welcome to another quick video. Um, just here real quick to talk about the camera I rented over the weekend, which was the Lumix S52X. Bear right back. What else is there to say about this camera? I mean, it's not going to be a technical review, no specs, no nothing. I'm just going to talk about my uses over the weekend and what I liked about it and why I actually rented this camera. One, the reason why I rented this is I'm getting kind of frustrated with Fuji. Unfortunately, I'm not the only one. There's a lot of other people complaining about the autofocus on the Fuji. Pretty much they've broken it right now with the autofocus going on. I don't know what's going on, but hopefully come November, middle of next month, they say they'll have an update to it. So we'll see what happens with that. Now, if it makes it any better, I don't know, but the continuous focus thing, if you're going to pay for it and you use autofocus, it needs to work. Even in some of the tests I've seen for spot metering, you can move and the spot stays. That's kind of ridiculous. Now, am I going to trade both my Fujis in? I'm going to trade one with a bunch of lenses in just so that I can have a reliable camera when I'm doing client work for video and photo and continue i will still continue to use my xh2s for real estate photo because i manual focus on everything on that anyway and speaking of manual focus i mean i use manual focus the majority of the time on my fujis anyway so autofocus really isn't a deal breaker for me but when i do use it i'm paid tw i paid 2500 dollars for both cameras a piece i expect it to freaking work so Fuji, if you're seeing this, you've got a lot of pissed off people right now, and you got a lot of people that are saying they're going to leave the ecosystem. And that's pretty bad, especially in your X line, the one that puts you on the map. Come on, guys. So now to the reasons why I actually rented the Lumix, as you've seen just in my prior comments, is because of the autofocus. But I wanted to try with the video to see how well it is. Give full frame a try. I haven't shot full frame since 2017 when I shot the A7 from Sony. And no, I'm not a Sony fanboy. I went from Sony to Fuji and I've been with, been with Fuji since 2017. But it may be time for a change. So that's why I'm looking at the Lumix. Now I will say this though. The autofocus, outstanding because that's all I rented was an autofocus lens. I didn't, I don't have any lenses or adapters to pair to the Lumix body right now. So the autofocus, outstanding. And the video at night with the, with even at 4,000 ISO, really, really good. So, I mean, and right now, like I, th I think I'm shooting this on uh, 800 ISO. So you got the base ISO of 640 and 4,000. So you got anywhere to play in between, which is a good thing. I don't like setting mine on auto because I don't want it choosing for me right now. I would rather be able to choose mine and go from there and you know salt the flavor you know see what i want but that being said the autofocus like right now i'm looking at the it I mean the box and the little cross thing is on my eye it's staying on my face right here completely which is nice it's kind of a nice feature when i'm doing you know talking head stuff which i would prefer autofocus for now back to the camera the menu system for me is a little convoluted but it's it's just something I got to get used to. The only downside that I don't like is compared to my XH2S, I've got seven menus that I can actually physically save on the dial, which is kind of nice. So that way I'm not having to think I can go through, set everything up, and I'm not having to hit buttons and everything else. That's the only thing I may have to get used to when I switch systems. Now, the only other downside is, is it's, you know... You have to shoot and record ProRes in 6K, 4K to an SSD, which is something I'm going to have to get used to. Why they didn't put a CFS, CFX Express type or B type on here, I don't know why. But I mean, there's dual card slot, which is kind of nice, but you still got to shoot. And you can shoot ProRes, I guess, on this, but you can't shoot ProRes past 1080 on internally so 
But now I'm getting into specs. Like I said, I'm not getting, I don't want to get into specs, but I just really enjoyed this camera. It felt good in the hand. It was easy to use. Uh, it's the first time I've actually used a 24 to 70 zoom lens in over seven, eight years now. And still not a fan of zoom lenses. I prefer primes. So that's what I do. The only time I use a, a Actually, I take that back. I lied. My bad. I do use a zoom. I use a 10 to 24 on my Fujis for my, my real estate stuff. But I really do. I hardly ever use any zooming on that at all. That's all at 10 millimeter for the photo. So with that being said, am I going to get this camera? More than likely, yes. I mean, probably this week I'm going to send off a bunch of stuff to KEH and see what they're going to give me. And everything should be enough to hopefully get me a body and uh, one lens. So that'll get me started. It'll help me with at least doing portraits and everything else and doing some video. Now, I will say, I'm going to include some clips, some photos, and some clips that I've shot this weekend, which I've been extremely happy with. You know, I was up around 5,000. At one point, it gets a little noisy, but, you know, I've got to go in and record, you know, put the noise reduction on it. But I just got to say, recording in a vivid profile at night, hardly any noise at all. So, I mean, they came out really, really good, and I'm I'm really pleased with that. So, I mean, shooting at night, you know, just doing street scenes, if you're not going to do any color grading, man, that's great. So now the other thing I want to touch on is I am eventually going to get into recording raw footage. I've just got to sit down and play with how to record and get the ProRes and all that stuff set up. Or if I'm going to switch over and you and shoot in B-Raw because I edit everything in DaVinci and I just don't feel like having to pay for another program just to convert, you know, ProRes RAW into a uh, Cinema DNG, which I think is ridiculous. But, you know, that's here nor there, not my problem. That's with DaVinci and whatever. So if I've got to spend the money on on getting a Blackmagic recorder, I will. But I want to get into it. That way it gives me even more control. But for now, I'll just stick with recording ProRes, Cinema 4K, 6K, to an SSD if I have to, or recording internally for the Cinema 4K and the Open Gate you Neo know, 6K, which is what I'm recording on right now. So if you have any questions, um, just feel free to ask. I mean, I know there's plenty of reviews out there on this camera, but not as many as you think they are. It's all... It's all about the Sony fanboys and the Canon and the Nikon fanboys. But I wanted to try something that I've never shot before. I've already shot Canon, I've shot Fuji, shot Sony, and I've shot Nikon. Not shooting Hasselblad or Leica because I just can't afford that kind of system. It's freaking expensive. So here's the videos and the, the photos. So uh, let me know what you think. Well, I hope you like those. Uh, if you got questions, comments, concerns, bitches, moans, complaints, leave them down in the bottom. Um, I'll do my best to get back to you on, on on answering them. You know, hit the like, subscribe, bell icon. That way you can be notified of when I'm going to post everything or post new stuff. So I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.